Welcome to The Putting Couch, episode 33. I am Jim Grundberg, along with Ted Galena and Cody Hale as part of the Seymour Putter Company's tour team. And today we are really, really pleased to have our Seymour Global Teaching Ambassador, Pat O'Brien, on. And uh, we always have great stuff to talk with Pat about. And uh, we just look forward to uh, having you on again today, Pat. So welcome. Thank you, gentlemen. Good to talk to you again. Good to talk to you, Pat. And I know um, some of our instruction podcasts have actually been really the highest rated podcast we've had. A lot of our listeners, they, they really, really love hearing from, uh, from all of us on, you know, in terms of fitting and instruction and, and, and tips. And, and Pat, you know, you're you know, going back to Payne Stewart and through the Zach Johnson years and having numerous players uh, at all levels uh, achieve great success. Um, you're really uh, a guy that uh, when you talk, we listen. So uh, we've had some great, great focuses on certain things. And today I know the three of us had discussed um, with you, um, it might be kind of cool to just sort of have some tips today. Um, a couple of the tips that we threw out were Number one, all of us get out there on the golf course and some days we're really hot with the putter and, you know, some days it just uh, maybe a first couple holes or whatever, we we have a really bad hole or all of a sudden we ram one way past the hole or we leave the first couple short and I think our tendency is to start thinking, wow, right now I've got to make an on-course correction. Uh, But my suspicion is, is a lot of players probably don't understand how to do that properly and may even be making things worse. So Pat, tell us a little bit about with all of your players, um, how you help them, you know, when they get into a round and, and try and keep it going or turn it back around. So it's so, uh, so it's going in the right direction with their putting. Sure, Jim. Uh, Let's see, let's cover one scenario. You're, you start the round and let's say you three putt, then you, you know, you miss a three footer for your second putt. So you know, now you're upset and then it could spiral downhill from there or you could, you know, get a hold of yourself and control the narrative from then on. So um, no matter what happens on the first hole, you might make a 20 footer on the first hole and, you know, off you go. But it's it's just about being aware. It's about being aware of where you are emotionally at, at the time. And, you know, if you start to get upset, you got to you got to sort of curtail that right away you got to breathe and tell yourself to calm down and relax and you know you're going to be fine positive self-talk that's all right you know but then you can also at the same time well why did i three putt why did i hit that first putt three feet by four feet by and why did i miss the second one was i nervous you know am i tense am i questioning my alignment whatever it may be and that kind of leads into your course correction type stuff too just being aware of what's going on um I always tell people that, you know, when you walk into the ball during your pre-shot routine and you get to the ball and then you connect to the target, uh, that's really what makes or breaks the, um, the putt. I mean, if, if you, if you connect to the target and everything looks good, you're probably going to calm down and hit a good putt. And if you connect to the target and things don't look quite right, maybe you don't feel right with your aim or your read, or you're starting to get more results focused, like, wow, I really need to make this putt, then you're probably not going to make that putt. So just being aware of where you are mentally and emotionally and, and also physically too. Um, but, you know, when you get in competition, the, the physical part, you should have that pretty well dialed in. So then it just becomes about being aware of the emotions and, and learning how to breathe and calm down and get into a better frame of mind. You know, Pat, I don't know where I heard this, but I know at some point in the past, the statistics were that PGA Tour players actually had a higher putting percentage when they were putting for pars than the same exact putt for a birdie. OK, and, 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 and I'm sure that's not with everybody, but I was surprised that it was even a discussion. I figured, you know, for a tour player that uh, for any player, I figured that, uh, you know, when you're punting for birdie, you're going to be more relaxed and, and, and you know, you're going to feel less pressure and, you know, be, you'd probably putt better. But my guess is that the tour players um, really have an ability to slow things down and focus on just the putt at hand and, and maybe there's no time greater for them doing that than putting for par. While I suspect that most of us 
when we get on the green, if we're putting for a par or then, you know, if we're putting for a bogey, we're putting for a double bogey. It probably just gets worse and worse and worse. Cause we're probably thinking about what's already happened on that hole, you know, and, and we just probably lose all focus and concentration on the fact that it really is one shot at a time. And, um, you know, because I know from, from when I play, you know, recreational golf, I mean, it's, it seems like you know, the worst of everything happens together. <laughs> so, and I think that's just because we're, we're thinking about the past. How, how do you get away from that? That's a good question. We've, I've talked to people about that for years. Why, why is it easier to putt for par than it is for birdie? And that's surprising to me to hear that uh, at the tour level too. Um, but I think it just comes down to, well, for, for the average golfer, um, you know, it comes down to the, that voice in your head. Like, oh, man, this is for birdie. You know, what if I make this? Or what if I don't make this? Well, you know, and then you start. It's just chatter, Jim. At the end of the day, what, what it comes down to is chatter. And you and I have talked about this. Um, the opposite of harmony is chaos. So that voice in your head that's going, man, what if I want to do it? That is chaos. So to uh, get into harmony and to breathe, and you can even hum to yourself just to get a consistent vibration will calm you down. Um, it's, that's really what it comes down to is, are you putting with a calm mind or are you, you know, do you have that voice in your head? Like just putting pressure on yourself. I gotta know what if I don't make this? I had a guy once, a, a tour player, a very famous one, um, he was struggling with three or four footers, no matter what the, the res, you know, birdie par or whatever. And in his pre-shot routine, he could hear the crowd groan when he missed the putt. <laughs> oh, no. So he had already missed the putt in his <laughs> mind, and he could hear the crowd groan. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> so it, <laughs> it happens at, la, at, la, at that level, too. So that's my big thing is just get yourself in a good frame of mind. And if you find that exceedingly difficult, then there's probably a physical component to that as well. And, and we all know that, you know, it's gotta be something in your setup, your ball position, your aim, whatever it may be your posture. So you could fix those things, but, but find a way to calm down. We have good, good putting to me is like a silent movie. There's, you can feel things, you can see things, but you really don't want to talk a whole lot. Unless it's P-O- super positive. POB, when, when you're out there on tour with your guys and you guys are, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, walking a practice round, do you, what do you guys discuss? I mean, is it, how much do you go into detail with them while they're on the green putting? Do you help them read the breaks? Do you, or you just go with what they're feeling at the time and you're waiting for them to ask the question? Or do you see something that you think you could help them with? It's a minor thing and, and you go with it. What do you what do you guys do when you, you're walking those nine holes or 18 holes on during the week before or during the day before the uh, tournament on Thursday? Yeah, that's a good question, Ted. Uh, the you know, these guys are professionals. I, I don't have to hold their hands. They Most of that time is they're learning the greens, the speed, the breaks, where the pins are going to be, charting everything out, and, uh, you know, where to miss, where to not miss, things like that. And then, you know, if, we're, if they did call me out there to help them with their putting, then at the end of their prep time, you know, we'll go putt a four-footer, full routine, this and that. I'm going to make sure everything looks good in their setup. And, uh, you know, they look comfortable and, and then we go from there. So, um, it's the encore stuff is different. That's, that's just more, you know, bonding with the guys, camaraderie, talking about different things, letting them do their work. And then the putting greens really where we will get into specific stuff that they need to work on. Pat, talking about maybe some like tips for, you know, some encore self-correction, uh, you know, sometimes it's tough to make, you know, technical changes when we're already on the golf course and we're trying to take, you know, we all maybe have a great warm up session. Then we go to the first hole and you mentioned, you know, maybe we, you know, three putt the first hole or maybe, you know, maybe we make a good one. So that changes the mindset, but say, we, say we're not putting as well as we want and we can't really make a technical change. You know, what are some of the things that you find that are easy to implement? Is it grip pressure? You mentioned breathing. That's what I had written down as well. You know, a routine, 
um, you know, rhythm in the putting stroke, you know, remembering light grip pressure. What is it that, that players can remember to, to implement in the round that can really help them get through to the round, take with them until they can get to the practice screen after the round? You know, um, you want to take ownership of your stuff. And what I mean by that is, is we all have tendencies. Um, and, and I don't believe that you really ever invent new ones. I think you have the same ones. So um, my tendency in, in my putting is to, uh, is to hold the putter actually too light, like not have enough energy in my fingers. So it's, it, it gets a little wobbly. And so when I take it away, I instinctively tighten, but I tighten the wrong way. So that causes undue tension. So that's that's one of my things. Um, and then another one of my things is is just ball position getting a little bit back sometimes. So I know my things because I've I've worked on them. I'm aware of them. People that take putting lessons, they should know their things. People that watch the videos that we have out, you know, they should kind of know their things. What to look for. The the beauty of putting is that it is all setup related. It is 100% setup related. The stroke is merely a confirmation of, are you in the right setup where your body can move the way it's supposed to? And are you free enough mentally where that putter can swing the way it's weighted? And, and that's really what it comes down to. And if it's not, then correct it. It's You should know, and it should be pretty easy. So take a breath, know your tendency, and then you can fix it right away. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Pat, because I know, we, you know, we've been, uh, uh, well, you've actually been with Seymour longer than we have. So, uh, you know, and I know one of the, you know, one of the key things to, to a Seymour putter, um, you know, kind of the two main ones is the rifle scope technology, which will help you get set up the same way every time as much as you can. And as you said, if putting is 100% set up related, then anything like rifle scope technology that will help you uh, settle in. Uh, to a consistent setup is going to be good. And then you said of our putters that incorporate great balance, you know, sometimes we call, uh, you know, we call this, um, you know, balance to the plane. We've called it um, face balanced and impact. And if you go on and, you know, study the dynamics of, uh, of, 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 you know, all Seymour putters is that, you know, we're also proud of the fact that so many of them have dynamics that will help the putter um, just sort of swing on the proper plane so the golfer can just kind of get out of the way and let the putter, you know, do its work. So um, anyway, I mean, tell us a little bit about how that has been a part of your teaching and your fitting for years. Sure. it's That's why I believe putting is really so simple. Um, we make it too complicated. The, the putter, the shaft goes in an angle somewhere around, you know, from 68 to 72 degrees. And whether the toe hangs or not, full or not, or face balance or whatever it may be, um, the, the putter is, it's a weight attached to the end of a stick. So it's its literally weighted to swing a certain way that the handle and the head do not swing together. The head always goes first because that's the way it's weighted. So you don't really try to use your shoulders. Your shoulders respond to the movement. Um, your job is just to get into a reasonably athletic setup control the putter the right way and your fingers without a lot of tension coming from anywhere else and um, get into the picture and then come back and let it go and you know you've heard me say this forever the best strokes are the ones you don't remember because it's it's just weighted to go that way it's going to come back to square if you let it and it's on you go it's it's super simple Yep, it's uh, most people try and make things too difficult, in, uh, including myself and, and just about every golfer I know. But uh, yeah, it's uh, we, we've 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 certainly helped where we could, and uh, you know, if golfers will just uh, like you said, take the time to understand you know the dynamics of the putter that they have, and and um, and getting that set up the same, it's going to take away a lot of variables that that leave us uptight. Cody, what were you going to say? No, I was going to just mention how you know we were talking about setup and how important you know, sort of posture and people have seen Kevin Kisner and, you know, you know, he, these, these things that he has, you know, adopted in his, um, his routine, his practice routine, you've seen this strap with these balance balls on his feet. So you've seen how important he's, he's implemented this into his routine in terms of thinking about stability and balance and posture into, uh, into his practice regimen. And he's a great putter, right? So, we talk about posture and setup and how important that is to the putting stroke and allowing the putter to do the work and return back to square. Pat, I mean, what are some of the things, I mean, that players can do uh, to help them 
improve their posture uh, in their potting uh, to help them, uh, you know, maybe get into a more balanced setup? Yeah. Um, the first of all, Kisner, that guy, I coached him for a couple of years. Great guy. Um, he could, he could roll out of bed, put a putter in his hands. He's going to roll it. Awesome. No matter what he does, he's got, he does some funky things with those balance balls. And sometimes it looks like he sits a lot in his heels and stuff like that. But I, I he's just a, a one-off. Like he, he can do some weird things and he's still going to roll it great. But if you look at the flow of the stroke, it's, it's perfect. He really just lets it flow no matter what. Um, Posture wise, it's, um, yeah, you don't want to be rigid. Of course, you don't want to have like, try to have perfect posture and pull your shoulders back and create tension. But, you know, for a lot of us that, that sit for a living, um, it's just really easy for your thoracic spine, which let's say is from your, you know, right around your sternum to your neck, somewhere in that area. It's really easy for that to get, uh, go into flexion, which means to kind of like bend forward and, and round out your shoulders and get tight in your chest and so um the first thing i would do is was try to lengthen that part of your spine just to you know you could even look up at the sky and just bend your back backwards and just open that area up that's that's probably the biggest thing and if you do that your 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 uh, pelvis will get back into neutral as well so it's kind of a package deal um a long chest i like i like that term as as compared to dealing with the shoulders so when you can do that your posture will be instantly better and then there's a metaphysical aspect to that too really which is you know and, and i see this with golf all the time and i see this with myself all the time when it comes to ball striking but some people get it with putting too that you've you've seen so many like bad shots and you've seen so many bad putts in your life and and it's relative and some have more than others but um there's a heaviness that settles in to you know, your heart area where there's just disappointment and fear and anxiety and results based stuff and left brain thinking stuff. And you literally get tight in your chest. You kind of close it off. So being aware of that too, and really just, um, opening it back up, just, you know, come back to the light, as they say, just breathe and open up and calm down and think good thoughts. And then you'll start to hit better putts and then it'll be easier to open back up. So I think there's that component too listening to everybody you know these last 17 18 minutes it's sort of uh, you know what we're talking about is trying to make putting easier during the course uh of your round and every time i'm we're talking i'm like oh, okay yeah that that seymour putter will help with that it's the consistency of doing it the same way over and over and over again so you can feel as everyone's been talking about comfortable relaxed if you do happen to go one way or the other, you know you're working to get back to where you were. You know that feeling. And, Pat, I, you know, watching my, my son's playing a little bit of golf this summer with his buddies and so forth, and all of them have problems with sort of speed control. And mm. some some of his buddies leave it short. Some leave it long. Um and then there's a bunch who are bunch who are just inconsistent. How do you? Is it? Is it? We talked about grip pressure that that, that makes with the speed control. I know the the um, the, uh, the thought process of trying to make a nice smooth stroke. Now again, these guys. Let me say they're between you know 11 and 13, 14 years old. So trying to get them in the right frame of mind when it comes to putting. You know, they everybody they can do everything by themselves. So how do you get that mindset into them and speed control during the round of golf of, of making it a little bit more consistent uh, with them? Uh, what a great question. I'm so glad you asked that. I think there are a couple components to that. I think number one, um, of course, your mechanics should be good and you should have as, as few variables as possible. Really one variable, which is how far you allow the putter head to swing back and then gravity is going to take it uh, down and through. So there's no applied force. You're not trying to accelerate it. You're not trying to slow it down as you're just letting it swing. So then you can have consistent contact and then you can get good feedback. Uh, so your speed should get better. But here's the other thing. Um, and I do this a lot with kids and, and I'll do it with adults too. Um, some kids 
didn't grow up playing a lot of sports and so maybe their hand-eye coordination isn't there uh, relative to others and so what i do is i have them roll balls and i have them roll balls with their primarily their left hand so your left hand is connected to your right brain and that's your creative brain and that's where the magic lives so when you roll a ball with your left hand you're inputting your right brain and you are learning how to roll the ball the proper speed so i have kids and adults do this all the time and and i'll play contests with them i'll i'll play six hold matches with them just roll the ball you know just let it like you're bowling just let it roll out of your hand and then just watch it roll so you're learning the picture you're learning the speed you're inputting your right brain and then that combined with mechanics will really help you dial in speed it's a great thought i never even thought about that I'm definitely going to, I'm going to try that with uh, my son and see how it goes well i you know it's funny ted i, I mean i've having been on tour a lot, I've noticed a lot of tour players will do that, you know, late in the day and it kind of just looks like they're goofing around, but you know, they never really goof around. So I'm sure when they're doing it, Pat, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to get that feel, um, on, on, you know, sort of the relationship between how much sort of, you know, movement they're going to need for how much speed on those greens. Yeah. It just helps your picture. I'll, I'll, you know, when I get kids, uh come to me and, and even some adults that that i can tell maybe aren't super coordinated um well just to to uh confirm that i will uh play catch with them i'll toss them a ball see if they can catch it and i'll just throw my hand up and see if they can hit it you know without thinking a whole lot about it and that'll sort of help me evaluate where it is where they are with their hand-eye coordination and, and then um you know we'll, I, i'll have them get a rubber ball and bounce it with their left hand and catch it and just do stuff at home, you know, play catch with their, with their dad or, or, and honestly, you want to do it with both hands. Really. You want to, I, I have my son and I play catch and he's a lefty naturally. Um, so he's very creative, very artistic. Um, but we'll play catch and then we'll turn around and play catch with opposite hands. And it, it's going to work both sides of your brain. It's going to work both sides of your body too. So there's so much you can do off the golf course away from the golf course that will help you when you get to the golf course. Pat, oh. what, what, sorry, Jim. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, another question I have is with uh, alignment during a round of golf. Um, you know, the first hole, you think you're aimed dead straight and the ball goes to the right. So second hole, uh, you know, I must have put it okay. Let me aim a little bit to the left and the ball goes to the left. And then all, you know, from the next – three to five, six holes, you're battling alignment issues. Is there a way to get out of that? Yeah, if you're guessing out there, you know, well, I'm too far right. Well, let me try to open up a little bit, but how much? And then there's that chatter, that discordant voice again, running around your head. So uh, we've talked about this before. The, 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 one of the greatest training aids for free that you could have is a hardwood floor with lines in it. Um, if you don't have that, then you can draw a line on the floor you can use a chalk line you can use a ruler you can use whatever you want but having a straight line on the ground where you can set up to that line and obviously you can see that your feet are reasonably parallel to that line if they're slightly open to that line fine if they're slightly closed to that line no good and then you're blocked off you can't see anything with your left eye assuming that you're a right hand golfer so if you're going to air air a little bit open with your lower body that's fine but <clears throat> it's all about the look so when you stand over that ball and your eyes are slightly inside the line of the putt and you have a line on the ground, look down that line and you'll see that both your eyes are going to triangulate to the same spot out in front of you. And that's the whole key to aim. So if you, if you have a straight line on the ground and you can picture you know, being close to that, aiming too far to the right, and then you have to look across your body to see the end of the line. So that's not a good look. Conversely, if you're too far left of that line, you have to look away from your body to see the end of that line. That's not a good look. So find out what it's like to have both eyes participate equally to see the end of the line. And that's how you look at your target. So if you can do that, you can tell exactly where you're aiming. And that'll give you peace of mind. Now, what about... Um... 
you know, a pre-shot routine when it comes to putting. So golfers, you know, obviously when you see the tour, it looks like everybody's got, you know, a routine for every one of their shots, including the way they putt. They step away from the ball. They hit, you know, two sort of practice strokes with the putter. Then they step up. And, and not everybody's got the same routine. Are there certain, you know, routines that, that you find um, are, you know, more common among, you know, really good putters? Oh, good question. Um, no, it's pretty personalized. Some people will take practice strokes, you know, behind the ball, looking at the ball, looking at the target with both eyes. Some people will take practice strokes to the side of the ball. Um, some people take no practice strokes. Uh, people walk into the ball differently. They're, they're yeah, myriad of routines, um, completely subjective. So when you develop your own, obviously you want to make it your own. And um, the, the guidelines I would say are really, uh, do you have a feel for the putt and whether you take a practice stroke or not? Can you feel that internally? Can you picture that ball rolling on the line that you want, on the speed that you want? If you can do that, then it's already calculated in your mind. You can just stay out of the way. So I think that's super important. Um, and I would say if you do take practice strokes, um, y- you want to have a, a purpose for them. Some people will take them just to take them, and it actually is maybe a distraction because they're not really getting into the, into the picture. So Tiger Woods has talked about that for years. You know, he putts to the picture. So he's he's got a clear picture of what he wants that ball to do, where he wants to go in on the hole and then he sets up to it he looks and he lets it go and and that's the best thing that you can do for your routine get a good picture calm down let it go and will the pat will the practice stroke i assume while they're taking this practice stroke of some sort really the main objective of that is to get a feel for how you know how how much they're going to swing the putter to get you know you said yeah you don't really want to um, accelerate. You don't really want to slow it down. So that arc, the size of the arc is going to determine how ball, how far the ball rolls out. And then of course, whether it's an uphill putt or a downhill putt, but I assume that the, the practice stroke is probably, um, one way to sort of really get that picture about how, how, how large that stroke is going to be to get the desired rollout. Yes, that's that's the hand-eye coordination part of it. That's why you want to roll balls. That's why Got you it. want to get really Got good at that. And it. it's all being calculated underneath the surface. Nothing you have to consciously think about. Just see it and feel it. Very cool. Very cool. Any other, like, really cool tips that you've given to players that you can, you know, just kind of think of, like maybe on a tour or something like that, that was just sort of a, you know, you've already given us some great stuff. So I didn't know if you had maybe one more tip that was sort of an, you know, Hey, this is uh, one of the better tips you've given to a high level player that, you know, sort of helped them go and have that magic week. And uh, I don't know if you you can think of something that's kind of cool. Sure. Yeah. I got one. Um, That's an easy one. Uh, So uh, Kevin Streelman, Mr. Cut at Colonial gave me a shout. So I went down to see him and um, I told him some stuff the year previous about his putting and short game and other stuff, uh, even swing stuff, really. And and uh, and he, I think he liked it, but he it didn't resonate with him at the time. So I went back down to see him, and he said, "What was that thing you told me last year about my left arm, my left shoulder?" And I said, "Oh yeah." And and we had talked about this on one of our podcasts uh, not too long ago. I think I really do think the secret to golf is. Um, is in your left arm, your left shoulder, if you're a right-handed player. So your lead arm, let's say. So if somebody were standing up and they brought their left arm out in front of their body, you know, inside their left leg, um, two things are going to happen. Your left shoulder is going to, what would we would call internally rotate or get round out, let's say. And your left arm is going to basically free up. So if you can do that, then your left arm is free to swing and it's going to swing. It's going to rotate. It's going to release no problem. And conversely, if your left shoulder is, let's say more in its socket, externally rotated, then you're going to notice right away that it's very um, stiff and rigid and it's hard to release the putter. You're more likely to hold it off. Almost. It it changes the rotation or it, it impedes the rotation, let's say. So then you have to compensate for it. 
So that is the biggest thing that I could ever tell anybody. And it could go through your bag is to, when you grip the putter, grip it where your left arm hangs naturally inside of your left leg. And that'll create an established, a natural angle. Um, your grip is not gonna be super strong. You'll notice that your palm, when you do this, is facing more towards your leg, most people. Um, but the uprightness of the putter is going to make your palm rotate just a little bit counterclockwise so it's more parallel to the target line. With a golf club and a flatter lie angle, your grip can stay stronger, no problem. But with a more upright lie angle, it's naturally gonna get a little more parallel. So it doesn't matter because the, the upper arm, the bicep and the shoulder are able to rotate and release very freely, very easily without any thought. So that's the biggest tip that I could ever give anybody. And that's just critical for allowing the putter to just swing on its natural arc is what you're saying. Correct. Got yes. It. Yeah. So, well, and then yeah. Streelman went on a tear, you know, he, yeah. he should have, should have, should have won Hartford, could have won Hartford easily. And he's been playing really good golf ever since. So just sometimes a little tip like that uh, can make all the difference in the world. And I mean, that, that brings up a great point. I think our listeners, hopefully by episode 33, understand that there's a lot to great putting. It's 40% <laughs> of the game. And, uh, you know, why don't you go out there and find somebody um, or contact us and we can help you find somebody to work with when it comes to putting because it can really get fun when you start putting some time and some effort into it. All the great players do, but, you know, most of us get out there and, you know, we want to run to the driving range and hit a few long clubs and then, we go straight to the first tee. So you're going to get out of the game what you put into it. And, you know, lately we, we certainly see a trend now towards golfers realizing that for, you know, for 40 to 50 percent of their strokes coming off the putter, that uh, it's not uh, a bad idea to get hooked up with somebody. Um, Pat O'Brien, uh, you know, director of instruction at Lakewood Country Club down in the Dallas, Texas area is kind of the top, the best of the best. But we would love to um, to help you as a, as a listener to the putting couch. Um, get hooked up with somebody that can uh, that can help make the game of golf way more fun and uh, and you can get uh, a lot more out of it, better scores just through great putting. And uh, that's what we're all about. So, um, yeah, Cody, you got anything else to add to that? No, that's awesome. That's a fantastic tip. I think one of the great tips that Pat always gave me and uh, I won't share too much unless Pat wants me to, but uh, was always in routine walking into the golf ball and how tiger always walked into the golf ball. And I'll leave it at that, but uh, it, you know, and how people circle around the golf ball and taking a direct line so you can better see your target. So I think players can really, how they visually see their target line, you know, so many players as they walk from behind their target, they walk and circle the target versus walking into it. I mean, that was one of the great tips Pat always gave me. So, uh, you know, I think it's important, you know, for a player to visually, you know, paint that picture. And, you know, Pat's so good about being able to do that. And I think a lot of our instructors be, are able to do the same. So it's, it's important if you're, if you're, you know, putting is a tough part of the game. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, if you are struggling and need some help, you know, we, we can definitely offer, that that you know that we can definitely offer that advice for them or provide that that a help pat you we know, really uh, appreciate having you on are there any other uh ideas or thoughts that you want to leave us with the only thing I, I would like to leave the listeners with is um this is one of the greatest companies not only in golf but in the world as far as you've got people who truly care about you to get the right fit to get the right mechanics to help you enjoy putting. If it's not right, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna work with you until it is right. I've never, I've never seen a company quite like Seymour where the level of care is so high and the level of passion is so high. And it's just, it's so impressive. Um, and, I, and I'm so honored to be a part of this family. And, and I really, really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Well, that's, that's, that's awesome. So everybody, we, we are here. And so uh, if there's anything here that you want to reach out to us about, you can, you can reach us a lot of different ways. Info at Seymour.com. You can look up Pat O'Brien at Lakewood and um, yeah, any of us, we'd love to get back with you. We'd love to help people, you know, find more enjoyment in the game. It's, it's a lot of fun. Our customers become our friends and, and, you know, we, we know that, uh, that nothing is easy in terms of becoming great at golf, but uh, we're going to certainly do everything we can 
to, to help make it fun and, and to simplify it. So with that, we really appreciate uh, having Pat O'Brien on as our guest today. This has been the 33rd episode of The Putting Couch, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. We appreciate you joining us. If you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do wherever you're listening. Be sure to leave a rating and review because that's how we get the Putting Couch podcast content in front of more people. Also, take a screenshot and share it on social media and tag us at Seymour Putters or hashtag Team Seymour.